What's up, everybody? Welcome back to week two. NFL, after a, we'll say, a rough week one, went to 50 50 in our picks. And first off, I want to make sure that I correct myself in the ignorance of what I said, calling the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, Sam Bradford. That's definitely not Sam Bradford, that's Sam Darnold. So, again, big screw ups on mine left and right throughout the throughout the last episode so yes let me correct myself and i kicked myself the entire weekend for saying that because i even repeated to my son when i was talking to him about it as well it's not sam bradford old player did play for the vikings and eagles um but no sam darnold would be the player that i was talking about uh, so yes anybody listening and said i'm an idiot yes you're correct 100 percent. but with that said we went 50 50 on our picks not a bad way to start off the season but uh, moving forward i think we got a good sample size of how the how the teams looked after week one um definitely some interesting games we didn't expect didn't expect the patriots to come out and play the way they did um expected the raiders to look like they did even though i i you know i took them to win they uh definitely didn't a very odd game definitely a weird game they played it very weird um eagles packers game was definitely fun to watch but man i don't know if that uh that feels gonna be able to hold up the grass that they had, the issues they were having there, um, man, it was just a, a rough, but it was also a fun game, uh, along with the Chiefs-Ravens game for Thursday night. It was good. Really enjoyed that. Um, so, yeah, definitely one that uh, looking forward to more games this week. Uh, just like tomorrow, we've got Bills-Dolphins starting off the week on a Thursday night game. Man, after seeing what happened with, with Tyreek, uh, getting into the – getting arrested or not – getting detained – before his game on, on over the weekend is, is nuts. I don't know what was going on with that. I know there's more coming out about it. Um, man, it's a bit ridiculous with kind of the way everything went. I watched a lot of the videos, the way the cops handled it, the way Tyreek handled it. I don't know. It was very weird. Khalees Campbell getting involved as well. He got ticketed. Um, very odd. I mean, the cops, cops were very uh, abrasive with what they were doing, and you know Tyreek was running his mouth as well. But teach their own what they do in those situations but uh won't get too much into that we'll stick it strictly strictly with sports on this so bill's dolphins man josh allen put the team on his back last week uh the man was insane rushing for touchdowns running all over the place throwing the ball they looked very well uh very well well rounded in everything they had the team looked great um same with the dolphins the dolphins are looking looking very 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 good uh a chain looked great in his um most of it was around but not very much tyreek did his thing uh i know waddle got a concussion as well or had it was in concussion protocol i should say uh was out for a little bit came back and actually did decent um as well so i know i was i was a little upset because i have him in fantasy as well but to see him uh be okay and be able to come back out, out on the field and play and finish the game you know not sitting on the sidelines because you know he doesn't want that um Tua did his thing, too. They did very well. Um, this should be an exciting Thursday night game. It's in it's in Miami, uh, so we'll see how it, how it goes. It's, it's going to be a home home game for Miami. They were away against Jacksonville last week. Um, man, this is a tough one to take. Starting off the week with a, with a great matchup, I think. And I'm, I'm loving that Thursday. I believe a lot of Thursday night games are set up to have some decent games. Um, throughout the season i know there's a couple of them obviously you're gonna have your hit or miss that always happens but um to start off bills dolphins i'll throw it out there and i think i'm, I'm gonna throw i'm gonna take the bills i'm gonna follow up with what or josh Allen should follow up with what he did last week going into miami rushing all over the place throwing the ball um finding his newer receivers with Diggs being gone uh, but don't, i would not be surprised at all to see you know tyree go off as well uh h and do his thing too so um, I like the running game in Miami. I'm not sold on it in, in with Buffalo, uh, but that quarterback that they have within Josh Allen is the one that's probably going to push them over uh, to win this game. And I think this is going to be, I mean, at least a, a seven point game. I think it's going to be a touchdown game. Wouldn't be surprised to see it at, at a, a 10 point, but at least seven point win on this one over the Dolphins. So I look for that one. Uh, man, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun game to watch. Next up, the noon games on Sunday. 49ers versus the Vikings. Man, if uh, if I was 100% wrong in how the Vikings looked, how I thought they were going to look, 
going into last week's game against the Giants, um, completely flip. I the Giants played how I thought the Vikings were going to play. Uh, Daniel Jones is pretty much one of the worst quarterbacks and overpaid quarterbacks I've ever seen, um, and they still continue to play him. I know they have to with the money they have invested in him, but man, it's it's rough to watch. Um, Malik Neighbors is there doing his thing too, but it's it's not going to pan out when you have a quarterback who cannot throw the ball. That offensive line is horrendous. Uh, Devin Singletary hardly could get anything going, um, not to mention that they had some of the ugliest jerseys I think I've ever seen. Uh, but, man, it's, it's, a, it's a rough jersey to look at. I had, hands down, one of the worst ones, but, again, it's their 100-year. I think it was their 1923 jerseys that they wore. So back in the day, you know, it was what it was. Uh, but, man, those are – it's cool to see them come back and, you know, wear them. But I know there's other ugly ones around the league as well. I think Philly has a yellow and blue that's not attractive at all either. Um, but on the, on the Niners' side, it was interesting to see that McCaffrey didn't play because of his knee Achilles issue that he's got going on. Um, some crazy stuff with fantasy on that one. A lot of even betting sites had it. Uh, I think Mason, their, their replacement or backup running back they had that went off as well, had, had an amazing game last week. Um, let, it, let it drop that he, would, he knew Friday night that he was going to be starting, so look for four, the 49ers to possibly catch a fine because they didn't release the information of McCaffrey not playing or being injured or kind of playing it off to mess up um, the game plan of the other team. So with that happening, the NFL can initially set a, set a fine because they're not playing within the, the fairness standards that they try to set. Also, NFL makes a lot of money off of fantasy, off of betting. You know, Believe it or not, they make a lot of money that way. Um, and even the betting sites had McCaffrey set to to play to start, because I dropped a couple a couple bets as well. And I'll get into uh, at the end of this. I had a huge bet that I missed by one, and it was a five it was a five digit bet uh, or win off of a twenty five dollar put down. So I'll let you know at the end of that. So stay tuned to the end of that one. I got a big big one I'll let out and I'll talk about uh, on that one as well. Um, but anyways, back to the Niners and, and Vikings game. The Niners are going to roll, I think, over the over the Vikings in this one. Uh, I don't think the Vikings are going to be able to come out and do what they did against the Giants. The Giants' defense is is horrendous. Uh, their offense is even worse. Um, the Niners are pretty much just going to dominate this game. I think it's going to be at least a – I mean, look for a 14-point, two-touchdown separation in this one uh, for the Niners to take the win on that one. Uh, next game – Buccaneers Lions noon man this is going to be another another banger I think to follow up after Thursday night into this one Bucks played a hell of a game last week Lions also great game against the Rams had fun watching that one um, Goff Amon Ross St. Brown uh, Jameer Gibbs Montgomery in an OT win man it was it was fun to watch I think the entire weekend had some great games across the board but this one was a fun one to watch as well with the the first overtime game of the season, and the Lions getting the win. They are a tough team, and they're getting the running game for once. Um, quarterback is set. You know they're 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 putting everything together. Laporta, you know he's he's around. I'm not I'm not sold on him as a on a fantasy standpoint. I look at it. He's not a, he's not a fantasy tight end in my opinion, uh, but the guy can do it on the field hands down. Uh, so look for them to continue their winning streak and. Knock off the Buccaneers. I think it's going to be a close game. Look for a three-point deficit in this one. You know, a three to three to six point, maybe a two-field goal type of game. I don't think it's going to be a last minute. I think they're going to have a better better game than they did against the Rams. Um, so I can see, you know, a six-point game in this one. Uh, next noon game, Jets Titans. Man, the Jets look good, and it was very impressive to watch how they did their thing. Um, but I was really hoping everybody would pull off the win. Uh, Brees Hall looked good, for sure. Rodgers, I... Rodgers is Rodgers. He's, he's an odd quarterback, odd dude. Uh, since the whole COVID thing, everything like that has, has happened with him. Uh, just a different cat altogether. Uh, I didn't understand also, I know they were down by quite a few points. I think they were down by 20, 21 or something like that with three minutes to go. And I didn't see exactly what point he had been taken out, but he was on the sidelines. The guy didn't play at all last year because of his Achilles issue. And to see him out of the game, because he would in Green Bay, he would stay in forever. 
and you, you didn't want to leave the game. But now, with those last minutes, just they were down. But to have have them have him sit and not be in the game, Brees Hall was still in the game doing his thing. Uh, everybody was out there still playing, but Rodgers was pulled. I don't know. Maybe I could have missed it. I didn't even look into it because I didn't really care. Uh, I don't know if he was injured. No, I didn't see anything of an injury, um, or they just wanted to pull him because they didn't want to risk him getting injured in a you know a two two or three score game. Perfectly understandable. I found it kind of odd, but either way, uh, I really thought the Jets had a chance to, to beat to beat him in that one, but it didn't happen. Um, but for sure, I mean, with McCaffrey out, they had they had that game set. They had the lead in the first quarter for a little bit, and then you know they never had a lead after that. But uh, going into Tennessee. Watch for the Jets to bounce back, uh, beat the Titans. The Titans had a tough game against the Bears last weekend. Uh, fun game to watch as well. Uh, Will Levis is, is doing his thing. DeAndre Hopkins, I don't know what's up with him. Uh, he's kind of set himself up in better positions. I know he has some, some jump balls and everything else. The, he may have, he may be to the point to where he is. He's not that guy anymore. But man, it's it's hard to it's hard to read him. I don't want to give up hope on. I'm seeing him do his thing because the guy can still jump out of the building, has an insane hands, everything else. Still an elite receiver, in my opinion. Um, Tony Pollard came out doing some things, too. So, I mean, the run game there is solid, but, I mean, you put it up against Will Levis, Brees Hall. Or, I'm sorry, Will Levis, Tony Pollard against Aaron Rodgers, Brees Hall. Two different, you know, styles there. Brees Hall is an elite running back at this point. Uh, he's going to prove himself throughout the season as well, so... Jets bounce back, take the win in this one uh, over the Titans, and I think it's going to be a 10-point game in this one. Uh, look for Brees Hall to go off, Garrett Wilson to do his thing. Rodgers, I think, bounces back also, has a better game than what he had last weekend. Doesn't stare into the camera at this point either. Does his thing, has some fun, and you may see the old Rodgers in this game because um, I think he's going to start playing with a chip on his shoulder and try to see what he can do with maybe his last one I think it's his last year. I do. I think it's maybe his last year to do anything. So, take the Jets in that one. Uh, followed by next noon game, Chargers Panthers. Oh, man, uh, Chargers. It was a very weird game. Not a not a fun one to watch uh, when they played the Raiders. I I really got sick of seeing it on Red Zone. They they played. They showed this game quite a bit. Um, but not as much as as the Broncos Seahawks game. The Broncos Seahawks game was the game that I could not get away from. Everywhere I went, that's all they played was that game, and it, it just became annoying at some point because I got so so sick of watching that. That was an extremely boring game, and I I think even <laughs> I missed it in my notes trying to go over everything before I recorded this. But man, it was it was a rough game to watch. But uh, Chargers Raiders. You know, fairly decent game. I took the Raiders to win that one, and that, that didn't happen at all. So Panthers are not are not quite there yet. I think they're they're looking for something, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to come through for them yet. Uh, I do want to see more from Bryce Young. I do think he has the ability to do things, but I don't know if it's going to be uh, them to. I messed up. No, I did. Take, I I took the Raiders and the Chargers won. I messed up. No, I, I don't know what the hell I said. Either way, uh, but with Bryce Young and that 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 team in itself, still young, still building. Um, don't think it's gonna happen for him. I think Chargers are gonna take this one, and it's gonna be probably you know a, a fourteen point game. This one probably a blowout. If not, uh, I'll be I'll be surprised if it's not a blowout. Uh, but I think the Chargers are gonna have it. The upper hand of this one, Justin Herbert looked good uh, outside of his player fish. I just said he's got going on, so I think he's going to be able to do his thing in that. Uh, so look for the Chargers to win that one, ten plus, maybe 14, 14 point game. Next noon game, Seahawks Patriots. I don't know what's up with the Seahawks. They have they have the team: Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Ingata, uh, Geno Smith. They've got the weapons. They've got the defense as well. The defense is solid. Um, Patriots, I don't know where the Patriots came from. Rondell Stevenson was doing his thing, everything else, but I don't know what's going to happen with this team. Uh, surprisingly, they were fun to watch. No Bill Belichick. For the first time in many, many years, uh, they came out, they won the game. Uh, I think they're actually going to continue on this one. I think they're going to take the win over the Seahawks. 
I do think it'll be a close game, but it, it will be a fun game to watch outside of the Seahawks uh, shooting themselves in the foot. Because I don't know what's going on. DK didn't even seem like he was really in the game that much. He had a few things that popped off here and there, but not a game that I was really excited to watch either because I don't like watching the Broncos. But um, Patriots in this one, and I look for – I can't I, – I, I have a feeling of at least a, a six-point game in this one as well. You know, it could be a last-minute field goal. It could be a six-point game. But I, I see a lot of field goals in this game also. Um, next one, Colts Packers. Richardson came out doing his thing, but the guy likes a deep ball. He likes to throw it deep. Um, that does not benefit Pittman at all. Um, John Taylor had a hard time getting anything going. Oddly enough, um, it was a very odd one to see, but I know that uh, we watched some of it and seeing Richardson kind of run around uh, in the, against the Texans defense was was fun. It was fun to watch, but Man, it was, it was tough, tough for them. CJ Stroud was also fun to watch, um, but with the Colts, who knows? Packers, they lost Jordan Love, MCL sprain. Uh, one of the last few plays of that game in Brazil, very, very tough. Um, I was hoping that it was just an ankle injury. I saw it. Uh, Jalen Carter wrapped him up in what some people are calling a dirty tackle. You watch it, you can see it's not dirty. It's a very common play. Uh, his his foot got stuck under his shoulder pad, and if you watch the slow mo, you can watch Jordan Love's knee pop. So it's sad to see, um, but yeah, it's part of the game. He's Jordan Jalen Carter was making a tackle on Jordan Love, got trapped, knee popped. It happened. It wasn't dirty. He didn't roll on him. Nothing like that. It's I had I've gotten in many arguments about it. it wasn't a dirty tackle. I can see people saying it just because they hate Philly. Or they're huge Packers fans. Um, Love is, thankfully, love is, love is young. He's going to be able to bounce back at some point. He's out, I think, they said four to six weeks. So you put him midseason, he's back. Hopefully he's, you know, 100% ready to go. I want to see him be able to bounce back and do his thing. Funny thing is to see now is who's their backup's going to be. Are they going to roll with Malik Willis or are they going to bring in, I know they've reached out to H Tannehill to possibly come in and, and do that uh, position, but it's hard to tell what they're going to do. Um, I would like to see Malik Willis do something with this team. Um, I, he was drafted very high with Tennessee. Tennessee traded into Green Bay for, I think, a handshake and a hot Gatorade. But either way, I would like to see Malik Willis be able to come out and kind of do his thing. He's, he's struggled. He's had a rough, rough go at it for the most part when he was in Tennessee. And then also, he didn't even get a – I'm not even going to count anything he did Friday night against the Eagles. Um, in the two snaps that he took, he had one – one bad throw and then got sacked at the end. So you can't even you can't even put that on him. You're pulling a guy in the last 30 seconds of a game trying to see if he can do anything, put anything together. It's tough, a lot of pressure. Um, so we'll see what they do. If Malik Willis gets a start, uh, look for it's probably going to be a solid Colts defense game. Uh, but I want to see Malik Willis be able to perform and show what he can do. Uh, but I will be taking the Colts in this one, sure, it's truly based on the fact that Malik Willis is playing, regardless of how I want to see him do. Uh, the Colts are going to be able to roll roll with this one in a 7-10 point win in that as well. Um, next and no, next noon game, Browns-Jags. Browns looked decent in what they did um, last week, but they lost to the Cowboys. They came, out, they came out strong. I think they had a 7-0 lead, and I was excited. And then it kind of went downhill from there. Deshaun Watson is not that guy anymore. I don't know what's happened. Um, either he's just not invested to it. Offensive coordinator may not do his thing correctly. But uh, Ford, that running back set there is is set. Amari Cooper's there. So, I mean, they've got they've got the assets. They've got the players. They've got one of the best defensive players within Miles Garrett. So there's no excuses for what they – are doing other than he's due to the coaching staff for Deshaun Watson this needs to go on somewhere and collect his check. It's kind of just saying the way that Daniel Jones needs to go away within New York. But uh, I'll take the Jags in this one. Uh, as long as the ETN can hold on to the ball and doesn't fumble into the end zone, they should be good. Um, Calvin Ridley was pretty silent last week as well. Didn't do a whole lot. Despite what's uh what I said, how I thought he was really going to go off. And, man, I missed a lot of a lot of points last week in what I said. But 
moving forward, we're going to do a little bit better. I'm going to do better as far as making sure I'm hitting my points and saying the right the right names of a even a player that's still playing, not a old, an old quarterback that's not even in the league anymore. But Jags take this one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say also in probably a seven point game in this. Um, but yeah, I see the Jags roll over the Browns seven point seven point one. Next noon game, Raiders Ravens. If the Raiders play like they did last week um, against the Ravens, they're going to get throttled. Um, Gardner Minshew, I love. I've always liked Minshew. I've loved everything he's done since he's been in Jacksonville. Was in Philly for a little while as well. Uh, Minshew mania was a big thing. The guy is a hippie at heart. Lives in his van. Does his thing. Um, but he looked. He looked rough. He looked uncomfortable within the new system that he's that he's learned um, in Las Vegas. We'll see if, uh, if he gets anything ironed out, if Devontae Adams makes it through the season because he seemed extremely stressed out and unhappy on the sidelines last week. Uh, I think he only had six targets. Not a whole lot was coming for him in that, in that game. Um, but, man, Devontae struggled to get anything going. Um, was also one of the main reasons of why I lost the bet. Again, I'll get into that at the end of this. Um, so against the Ravens, I mean, Lamar, as of right now, he's, he's got an undisclosed injury. I'm using air quotes with that one injury. Um, he hasn't been practicing a whole lot. I don't know if he's either banged up personal issues, you know, whatever. Um, but with that and Derek Henry, who was, he got a touchdown, had a few things. I think they had five or six carries last week. Um, but they, Harbaugh released a statement saying they didn't bring Henry in to be the bell cow, to be the one that's touched the ball, you know, 10 to 15 times a game. They're going to use him sparingly and, and strategically to put them in positions to score, which they did. Um, but the Raiders defense is not going to be the Chiefs defense. You're going to see possibly Henry break off bigger runs, maybe get, you know, six to 10 carries. You know, if that's if that's where we're going to play with him, great, perfectly fine with me. And in fact, it's probably smart to do it that way as well. Um, the guy is a is a workhorse and will be your workhorse if you want him to be. But again, the accident prone injuries that he will add up quickly as well do tend to follow him in his track record how he's had it. So Ravens will roll with this one. This is going to be a blowout in my opinion. Twenty one plus points. Uh, win for that. I don't see. I see the Ravens defense shutting down anything that Minshew wants to do. Um, I don't. I don't know what they're going to be able to do. Madison actually looked good behind that defense, behind the Raiders' uh, offensive line. So if he can get anything going, that might be a different story. But I don't know how they're going to pan out uh, in this one. But I don't think they're going to have enough to to stop anything that the Ravens can throw. We Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, you know, Zay, Fla Zay Flowers look good as well. Likely. You know, Andrews, Isaiah Likely is probably the one that a lot of people are talking about when it comes to fantasy and everything else as a tight end to pick up. As we all know, Mark Andrews also has had a big injury last year. Um, and even last year, it took him a little while to kind of get going. I know they used him as an inset on the offensive line to do more blocking, which opened up Likely. Also, from what I read, Andrews was bracketed, so it kind of shut him down a bit more. So if you play fantasy and you're looking at Likely, if you, and if you have Andrews, don't be worried about it. I was sick with him. And also, if you want to grab Likely, very good chance he's going to be a boomer bust. Um, and as of right now, Andrews may be your boomer bust as well until he really gets going. This offense starts to kind of figure out a little bit more how they're going to use Henry and Lamar at the same time. So it'll get interesting. This team is going to be something to really deal with midseason and moving into the playoffs because that's they will make the playoffs, uh, hands down. But look for the Ravens to take that one in a, in a 21 21 points, something around there, 14 to 21, if not more, blowout uh, against the Raiders. Uh, next noon game, Saints Cowboys. Man, I did not, I did not see the Saints performing like they did last week, blowing out uh, and scoring. What they put up? They put 30, was it 30, 47 points against the Panthers? I mean, if if they can do it, I mean, I don't see the Chargers not being able to do it in that one as well. Putting up that many points, opening day, on the, on the road, were they home? Yeah, they were home. They are at home, so this one, they're on the road against the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. Um, and, 
man, I, I, I want I want to see the same Saints team go into Dallas and do what they did there. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. If Rashid Shahid can do what he did, Derek Carr can continue to do what he was doing. Uh, even Kamara was in, was was involved with things. He got a touchdown. Um, man, just seeing that whole team seem to click on all levels. Defense was doing what they could do. Um, this one, I think, will be a last-second field goal type win. I really want to see how this goes out. Um, I'm excited to see the Saints be able to come back and actually do something to the Cowboys. Stop them, stuff them, you know, do what they can. Uh, but look for a last-second field goal. It's, sadly enough, I do think the Cowboys pulled this one out um, in a last-second field goal. Um, and, it, you know, and it could be also they could go into overtime as well. Cowboys tend to shoot themselves in the foot towards the end of the, end of the games as well. So if Saints can bounce on that, they can either they can kick the last-second field goal or touchdown or it goes into overtime. But I do see the Cowboys winning this game in some form or fashion. We'll see. In the last noon game, it's going to be a burn burner. Probably going to be like the, the Broncos Seahawks game last week. Extremely boring. Giants commanders. One overpaid quarterback to another possibly overrated rookie uh, with the commanders. Williams didn't look horrible. Um, the running game looked good. Brian Robinson looked good running. Um, Eckler looked decent running. Uh, definitely a good combo with those two. Uh, I do think Robinson's going to get more of the carries. Uh, than Eckler, but uh, neither one of these teams, obviously this is a divisional game as well for the NFC East. Um, these two are going to battle for the bottom two spots back and forth. So uh, that's what you're going to see out of these two. You know, they're battling for right now draft position. That's all they're really going to be battling for. Um, this one, commanders are going are gonna, to probably going to walk away with this one. But again, these interdivisional games do get tough. Uh, just like we said last week with the Raiders and Chargers. When you have these interdivisional games, they're almost a toss-up. Um, but I will be taking the Commanders in this one to go over the Giants because I don't think Daniel Jones is going to be able to do anything at all like he did last weekend. Um, Singletary, more likely, not a whole lot. Um, so we'll see. This one, probably touchdown, touchdown to 10-point game as well to wrap up the, the noon games with Commanders taking that lead or taking that win. Uh Next 305 game, Rams Cardinals. Damn, Rams Rams lost a very close one in overtime. And uh, how did how did the the card? I watched the Cardinals game against the Bills, and I really thought that they were going to be able to do a whole lot more. Um, I know that it was a. I mean, it's only a six point game, but the way that the the Bills played against the against that defense shows me that the Cardinals are definitely a team that's moving in a direction to be something to deal with. Um, they'll be a thorn in your side. I don't think they're going to be playoff bound, but they're going to be that team will, that will ruin somebody's season um, moving forward and later in the season. And sadly enough, <laughs> maybe the Eagles, because that's what always ends up happening, is every year that we play, that the Eagles play the Cardinals, there's always a problem. And... I hope, 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 hope that it's not good. We don't even play them this year. So I don't have to worry about that. So without us having to worry about that, cool. Beat somebody else's thorn because it always seems to be ours. So looking at it, they will be a team that's going to be the interrupter for a lot of a lot of teams. Um, this one, but I do see the Rams pulling out this one. And you know what? No. Change that. I will take the Cardinals in this one. And what's probably going to be another close game Um Last second field goal in this one as well. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a blowout in any way. Probably a tough game, probably and also probably a low-scoring game as well. Both have decent defenses. The offenses are rebuilding. Uh, I know Nakua's out. He's on IR, uh, so that's going to free up Cup. Uh, Stafford can do his thing. Kyrie Williams is there as well, but uh, on the other side, you got Murray. James Conner, Dorch, who just came out of nowhere with what he did last week as well. Not not a whole lot of points, or not, I'm sorry, not a whole lot of yardage out of him, but he's definitely getting in there and showing himself what he can do. Um, so, yeah, I'll take the Cardinals in this one in a low-scoring game of, you know, 10 to 13, 10 to 14 point game, um, meaning, you know, Rams 10, Cardinals 14, something like, something along those lines, low double-digit game. 
in that one, but the Cardinals pull off the win with at least, at least a three to six point win. Next three twenty five game: Steelers, Broncos. Shocked again to see uh, with the Steelers, Russell Wilson in full kit, everything, shoulder pads, everything, but inactive. I found it very odd that they did that, and I also wonder if it was a last minute decision of okay, you're not playing, but you're suited up. So Justin Fields got the start, and it was a very it, it just it blew me away to see Russell Wilson on the sidelines uh, doing his thing to help out Justin Fields, mentoring him, doing doing whatever he can there. Uh, they pulled out the win. Surprisingly, George Pickens looked decent. Uh, Najee, Najee Harris looked decent. Uh, I think he has a bigger bigger games ahead of him as well. If Justin Fields can stick with this and be the starter and run with it, you know maybe he does become a decent quarterback within the Steelers organization. I think Russell will end up probably taking it midseason. We'll see how Fields does. If Fields doesn't collapse on himself like he did in Chicago, which don't get me wrong, he was good in Chicago. Um, I don't I don't get why they did it to him, but they got rid of him. Uh, whatever it is, what it is. Hopefully, he can redo, rebuild himself and become, you know, an elite quarterback within Pittsburgh and do his thing there. Um, Broncos. It's really I don't even know with Nix as their quarterback, and I don't I didn't even pay attention to anybody else on the team other than Cortland Sutton, uh, but. It, this team, this team needs to just pack it up. Broncos are not not a fun team to watch. They haven't been fun to watch for a very long time. I have a hard time watching any Broncos games, and it's starting to realize that I think I might hate the Broncos almost more than I hate the Cowboys. But they're getting up there, um, and that also could be just just from being a Chiefs fan growing up as well with my parents. You know, I was I grew up Chiefs fan, Eagles fan, but. Chiefs, Broncos, obviously Chiefs, Raiders as well, but I, I tend to like the Raiders more than the Broncos. But, you know, the uh, next 325 game, <laughs> Bengals, Chiefs. Always a fun game to watch. The shit talking always goes back and forth with Burrow head and everything else that come in there. Um, I don't think Bang uh, Burrow's is at 100%. Seems like his right hand, his throwing hand is, is banged up, something. I know a lot of reporters are asking some weird questions about him picking up a water bottle and a few other things, but man, his his style of playing is very different. Um, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, you know, they have all the all the units there. Defense is solid. Uh, I think they the Bengals also lost their starting center last season after you know they retired. Uh, but I think this team is is definitely there to make a playoff run, do their thing. Uh, the Chiefs also, I mean, we know Pacheco, the running back. Kelsey's there. Mahomes, obviously. Um, Rashi Rice, Xavier Worthy. I mean, you got small sample sizes of these guys last week uh, in what they can do. Defense is solid. Fun team to watch, like always. Um, everybody talks about it. Everybody's all about it. But, you know, I don't think that the Bengals are going to come in and do anything to stop the Chiefs' momentum that they've got going. They're full steam ahead from the get-go of last Thursday into the season. They're, they're ready to go. They're hungry. They want the three-peat. As of right now, nobody can stop them. We'll see what the Bengals do, but I don't think they can pull off this win. I do think this also is going to be a close game, uh, but a high-scoring game as well. I do see a lot of, a lot of yardage from both quarterbacks. Um, it'll be a fun game to watch. They're going to air it out. Wouldn't be surprised to see Kelsey possibly get, get in some trouble for running his mouth like he always tends to do. Guy's fun to watch. Um, Chiefs pull this one off, and I think a last-minute last field goal or overtime again. I think we do have two overtime games this weekend um, as well, be it this one and who did I have? I think I had my memory is garbage. I can't remember anything. Oh, Saints-Cowboys, I think I said. Um, so, yeah, look for the Chiefs to win that one. Last second overtime. Last second field goal or overtime win, either way. Uh, lastly, the uh, last last weekend game of Sunday Night Football, Bears-Texans. This one will be exciting to watch. Caleb Williams come out against C.J. Stroud. I want to see Caleb Williams have some fun like he did last week. They're coming from behind win over the Titans. If he can continue to put it together and not look completely lost, the guy may have something. But first game, who knows? I think that they have what it takes. If he, if he can get the run game going with DeAndre Swift, 
Uh, they may have they may be able to do it against the Texans. I know the Texans defense is very solid. Um, they were to shut down Taylor, so more than likely Swift won't get anything going. So I'm going to take the Texans in this one. Sadly, I know that I want to build up Caleb Williams to do something with his career, but it's going to be a 10-plus point game. Uh, Texans take the win. We'll see what it is. Um, yeah, look for Texans take that one in 10-plus points. And then lastly, Monday Night Football. <laughs> Funny, they go from a Friday night game to a Monday night game. I don't know if they just gave Monday night because they had to travel from Brazil. But Falcons at Philly. Eagles get a Monday night game at home, home opener. Te actually, their first home opener. They were home in Brazil, but this is their actual first home at the link. Kirk Cousins did not look like Kirk Cousins of the past. Uh, they pointed out, I, I watched some other film footage on him and some stuff that they pointed out about his stance. He's always been an offset stance of his right foot forward, left foot back style, but now I guess he's running pistol offense, which is the offense at the, the offensive corner wants to run with Kirk Cousins, which is a completely different set than what he's ran with the Vikings. Way different, uh, and you can tell just in the way that his footing is, the way that he sets and does everything else. Um, Bijan was doing his thing as well. Drake London was getting some uh, getting some reps in. Uh, Pitts had one, if not two touchdowns. I can't remember exactly what he had. I know he had one for sure. I think he, I want to say he got two, but I don't remember. Um, no, it was just one. It was only 10 points. Yeah, it was just one. I know because I watched, I watched him score one at least. Um, he might be the only one that scored. Also, but um, I don't think they're going to be able to do anything against the Eagles defense. Eagles offense, if they can get it going, they're at home, uh, coming off a win. They're in a, again, I said the field's, the field conditions weren't the best, but I, I can't blame any of those conditions on the way that Hurts played. Uh, two interceptions, just he did not play at all the way that he has in the past. Um, and I have a hard time seeing that he, he's going to be able to make it through an entire season mentally. I don't think he's mentally locked into the game. Um, I think he's trying to do too much and and run too much of the, of the offense without getting help from anybody else. Um, obviously, the big big thing of the entire entire week was seeing Saquon Barkley, three touchdowns, two two on the ground, one through the air, and a great catch uh, in the front corner of the end zone over two defenders. Looked great. I I don't know what else to really say. The guy looked amazing. Uh, Devontae Smith looked great. A.J. Brown looked great. Goddard was involved as well. Um, just seeing the way it is, but... Hertz has to tighten it up. Offensive line, you can see a little shift in there. I mean, I'm not going to say that losing Kelsey has completely torn that entire offensive line apart. Not at all. Um, Cam Jurgensen can do his can do his thing. He's got support within my lot of Lane Johnson um, and the other guys that are on there as well. There's just they have to come together a little bit more to give Hertz some more time. Um, and Hertz, I think, needs to just rein in a little bit and focus more on what he's doing. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't see the Falcons being able to do anything in this one. Uh, but I only think it's going to be a touchdown win in this as well, because Eagles tend to play down in their ability to the team that they're playing. They don't seem to really want to run away from anything, uh, run away with the game and score a lot of points. I think they play down to the ability of the Falcons in this one and only win by a touchdown. Sadly, I'd love to see them just kind of blow, blow everybody out, but, um, uh, Yep, look for that one to be seven point game, you know, a touchdown. And it might even be a last second touchdown in the way that they tend to do things. So look for that one to happen. And uh yeah, that'll wrap up the Monday night with an Eagles win. Happy for me. Uh now, to get into, like I said last week when we were doing the first episode, I don't do a whole lot of betting. So I get on DraftKings and I do a few things here or there. Um I don't drop a whole lot of money in. I just play with what I get. I try to win just enough to kind of tease myself with some bets and whatnot. But I put a big, big touchdown bet down. I had multiple players. I think I had about, I tried to hit at least a 10 pick, like a, a same game parlay. So I had multiple players getting touchdowns. I had uh, Brees Hall. McCaffrey didn't play, but he was still able to put in there. So they ended up voiding that one. So I had Brees Hall, Devontae Adams. Uh, I had multiple other, uh, uh, Chris Godwin. Well, it was about 10, it was 10 different players. And going into the Raiders game, I had it. It was about 
I think four players that I had that hit already. Devontae Adams was my one I needed to hit. Chris Godwin got a last, I think the final touchdown in the Buccaneers game. Devontae Adams was one I needed to hit. Devontae Adams did not get a touchdown. Uh, so that left me hurt because obviously that killed my bet at that point. But then going into the rest of the weekend, everybody else hit their touchdown as they should. And it left me not winning the 87,000 that I was supposed to win. Uh, big bet. And I was, I was stoked because it was hitting. And I was like, oh, it's like Devontae Adams. He has to at least just get some, you know, over the top jump up, a jump ball at that point. I mean, he's known for jump balls, things like that. I was like, Devontae Adams has to get a touchdown. There's no way he does get a touchdown. Well, he didn't. And I completely forgot that Gardner Mitchell was the quarterback for the Raiders. And if I had remembered that, probably wouldn't have taken that that bet with or added him into that bet, added Devontae in. But, man, just to see that one pickoff for that five-digit payout would have been huge. I was excited about it. And, obviously, you start seeing, you start thinking about, you know, what you do with that money and stupid shit that goes through your head when you get become an adult and get adult money. It's the stupid shit you want to buy. Um, but, anyways... I will do some, some more of those, but I have noticed that I, I like doing the touchdowns of who can get touchdowns, who can get one touchdown, two touchdowns, things like that, because I picked, I did pick Barkley to hit two touchdowns. He only did three. Um, but hitting ones like that, just having some fun with it, messing around, you know, throwing a $5 bet here, you know, $10 bet there. I enjoy it. I do have fun with it. Um, I've used my bookie. I've used DraftKings. They're both fun. Um, I, I do enjoy both of them. I do like my bookie a little bit more as well, but uh, I do enjoy DraftKings as well because there's some other things you can do on DraftKings. You can on my bookie, but I've used them both. So if you got questions, let me know. Um, I will be throwing some more on uh, some more bets on the touchdowns. I'm not going to drop them in this one. I think next week I may throw in some ideas on what I'm going to do touchdown wise or some other bets next week. But uh, yeah, be sure to check us out. Always check out Two Guys One Game Pad on. Anywhere you can get your your podcast, we're there. Also, Ring Rage Report is over on YouTube. We stopped dropping those uh, podcast style. We wanted to do that as more of a special over on YouTube. We're dropping the ones over there for the wrestling that we do there. Also, we have another another podcast that I'm working on with another buddy of mine uh, that we're trying to drop, hopefully before Halloween. Uh, it's going to be more towards movie-based stuff, stuff like that. So, uh, yes, please check us out. Every Thursday night also, Sig, the other counterpart of mine within Two Guys One Gamepad, we play a lot of times Call of Duty Thursday nights, have some fun, just relax, hang out and do our thing. Um, yeah, come check us out. And if you also you want to be on the podcast, talk about some sports left or right, because I will I'm trying to do these every week. Also do the recap and then picks for the following following games coming up. Let me know. Let me argue with me, however you want to do it. I'm more than welcome to chit chat back and forth, talk shit, however you want to do it. Um Again, I hope I got all the names right this time. I didn't mess anything up. But uh, no, I'm not an announcer, not a, not a broadcaster of any kind, so you see my faults and everything when I'm talking about this stuff. So hopefully we get better as we go on. But I'm, I'm enjoying it. Continue to do it. But till the next one, bye, bitch. <laughs>